Remember to shut off and lock out the main breaker before you start working on the air compressor. We're going to lock it and tag it out. Alright, so we shut off the power to the air compressor, put a lock and tag on it, performed a bump test, tried to energize the air compressor, verified it would not start, called all that in. Now we proceed with the service. Here, we begin service by removing the oil separator scavenging line. Unfortunately, the brass fitting broke. This is an extremely common issue, so you may need to extract the old fitting. We broke the fitting screwing into the top of the separator lid, so we ended up using a chain fall and a strap to pull out the rod. You can tell the rod did not break off because the end of the rod is cut at a 45 degree angle. This is to allow the rod to suck oil in from the side and not just the bottom. These bolts are 1 inch and 5 eighths. We are disconnecting the flange on the side and then hook a chain fall up to this bracket. Then we are going to remove all of these 1 inch and 5 eighths bolts and lift the whole lid off to access the oil air separator. We loosened all the bolts, took the bolts out of the flange, and now we are going to remove the lid and hang it by the chain fall out of the way in front of the air compressor. Now we remove the old oil and air separator. While this is being filmed, we used an oil transfer pump and pumped out all of the oil into a used oil containment tote that was prepped ahead of time. Prepare an area before you remove the separator to place the separator down on. See how there's a little bit of rust in the bottom? That looks pretty good. When you're doing this job and you see a lot of rust, you need to increase the temperature of your oil. Too much rust is indicative of running too cold. A good range to keep the temperature of our Gardner Denver oil is 170 to 180. If you run the temperature too cold, it causes rust. The water will not vaporize. Instead, it will stay in the oil and start rusting the bottom of the tank. Then that rust can break off and cause damage to the internal components. If it's too hot, it degrades the oil. Above 180 degrees, it starts to break oil down. 180 is a good number, but you really don't want to see it over 200 degrees.
The oil we are using for this service is Sanduro SHB 46. The Gardner Denver will use about 470 gallons of oil. When we put the strainer back in, we need to take anti-seize and apply it to both sides of the gasket. It does not matter what color or brand, but grab some anti-seize and apply it to both sides of the gasket. We do this for two reasons. One, it helps the lid seal much better and makes a good seal. Two, the next time we do this service, the separator will just pop right out and we won't have to scrape the old gasket off. We prepared the surface on the underside of the gasket first. Those staples are supposed to be there. Those are actually grounding straps. Do not remove them. Now we are going to apply anti-seize to the entire top surface of the oil air separator gasket. You want to fill the oil to the line on the sight glass or the arrow painted on the air compressor. We have to fit oil filled back up. Now we scraped the old gasket off and prepared both sides of the flange with anti-seize. For this service, we did not have a new gasket, but in the future we should have a new gasket for the flange off the side of the lid of the separator. While we have this off, take your flashlight and make sure the check valve is not stuck open. When it's stuck open, it's plunged back. The action on this valve does not tilt, it pushes straight back. This valve looks good. So we have the oil filled back up and both sides of the oil separator in place with the gasket prepped with anti-seize on both sides. A new gasket placed in the flange off the side. Now it's time for us to reinstall the lid of the oil air separator. Using a chain fall, we have the lid in place just low enough that we can start to hand tighten all the one inch and five eighths bolts. Always remember to hand tighten them first or get them started by hand. If you don't, you can cross thread the bolt and damage the female threads. Now, all the bolts are started by hand. We are using an impact to tighten them the rest of the way. Make sure you do this step in a star pattern. This ensures you have a good seal and don't damage the gasket. When attaching the air check valve to the lid of the separator, you can use a pry bar to float it in place and start the bolts. Reinstall the air scavenging tube. You can screw the brass fitting into the lid and get it started. But remember, the bottom of the oil scavenging line cannot touch the bottom of the separator or it will vibrate and wear a hole through the bottom of the separator causing a failure that will require a separator replacement. Remember to use Loctite 515 or pipe dope on your fittings while you reinstall the line. The technician is now going to attempt to blow and suck air through the end of the oil scavenging line. This procedure is to verify the check valve is working correctly. If the check valve is working, you should be able to blow air but not suck air. Right. 
Unfortunately, during this service, the check valve is not working correctly. This can lead to a slug of oil being discharged into the main air outlet during startup of the air compressor. The check valve will be replaced during this service. Now we will change out the air filters. Start by unscrewing the bracket on the top of the air filter and put out the old air filter. Install the new air filter rubber seal first, then secure it with the wing nut in the middle. Disassemble the cap of the air filter housing by unscrewing the wing nut in the center. Now we need to clean the dirt out of the end cap of the air filter housing. Lightly shake and tap the cap and tap on it with your fingertips until all the dirt is gone. Now reassemble the end cap as shown. Put the end cap back on the filter housing, paying attention to the arrow indicating the top of the cap. The arrow should point up. Now re-secure the end cap. The last step is to take the mushroom off the top of the filter housing and blow it out with an air hose, as shown. Then, reinstall the mushroom. Repeat these steps for the other air filter. Now it's time to install a new oil filter. Place a catch basin under the oil filter housing. Using a 5 8 inch wrench, remove the bolt on the bottom of the housing. This bolt goes all the way through the filter housing to the top of the oil filter. The whole thing will try to fall when you fully remove the bolt. Dump the old oil out of the oil filter housing. Remove the 5 8 inch bolt from the bottom of the housing and replace the washer and o-ring that goes on the bottom of the housing, then reinstall as shown. Now install the spring and new oil filter into the housing. Note, the oil filter is installed with the small hole going into the housing first. Remove the old o-ring from the top of the housing. Note, the o-ring deforms during installation, so the o-ring remove will look very different from the new o-ring you replace it with. Remember to always lubricate the new o-ring before you reinstall the housing. This creates a better seal. Place the plastic guide before you reinstall the oil filter housing. Center all the components as best you can before you attempt to reinstall the housing.
Reinstallation of the housing can be very difficult for one person. Best practice is to have a second person hold the top of the housing while the technician screws the 5 8 inch bolt on the bottom back into place. Our last step in our service is to grease the motor. About three seconds with the power grease gun or five pumps with the manual grease gun. Be sure to get both grease points on the motor. Be sure to check the oil sight glass. It will take about 10 to 20 minutes. When it starts working, it will look like these. This is our new check valve on our oil scavenging line. While checking for oil leaks, check the bolt on the bottom of the oil filter housing, the seal on the oil water separator lid, the flange on the main air outline on the lid, and the scavenging line. Before you start the air compressor, double check the oil slash drain valve is shut with the safety tabs engaged. On this service, we grease the motor on both points. changed both air filters, changed the oil filter, changed the oil and air separator, the oil. We also added a new check valve and replaced the oil scavenging line. Thank you very much for your time. I hope this video will assist you in your upcoming service. Have a fantastic day.